Hey everyone, we're back for another IDA, and today I'm going to be looking at what a lot of people on the NA server played as their first battleship ever, the Tier 3 South Carolina. Now before I get started, we're going to go ahead and take a quick look at the lineup. So the first thing you're going to notice is, yeah, low tier again, which is okay because it's protected matchmaking. Three destroyers could be problematic not a ton of uh all well all three of their cruisers are very fun targets to shoot at um because they have giant citadels and they're very easy to hit although the south carolina's accuracy kind of makes it a crap shoot on whether or not that actually happens a lot of battleships with a lot more firepower than me guys who are in the wyoming's they they bring the heat so those are probably the biggest threats to me um, in addition, the carrier could be a problem too, so I'm going to have to keep an eye out on that. And in this game specifically, the uh, our carrier is going to be AFK for the entire game. So what I'm doing right now is I want to maintain a central position, at least around my cap. This goes back into playing the role. Sorry about the uh, low tiers. People really like spamming the, the cuss button. It'll, it'll end eventually, hopefully. So what I'm doing is I'm already pre-turning my turrets. I'm checking his turrets right there to see which way he intends to go. Typically, battleships predict. You, it's easier to tell where a battleship wants to go based on which side his turrets are on. I know he wants to go south. Either that or he's not paying attention to his turrets. But he most likely wants to go south. Typically on this map, battleships tend to like rush to the borders. Or, as you'll see the Wyoming in the north do, run immediately south and make himself pretty much irrelevant for most of the battle. What I want to do is I want to fulfill my role. I want to create crossfires with other battleships. And I want to, because of my ship's slow, I want to get a central position. I think this is before I even got the uh, engine upgrade on this ship. So that's my goal. I want to put myself in a position to be relevant in the entire battle. One of the things that people really complain about the American battleships up to tier 7 is that they're slow. And they say, well, the battle's gone. The battle's over before I even get there. Your initial position is lacking. That's why. Saying, you know, blaming the ship being slow and that's why you can't perform. You're not playing your role the way you should. And with specifically the slower battleships, you want to try to get close to the center of the map or at least in between two caps so that you're relevant for the entire battle. I see a Kaladin, and this is definitely something I want to shoot. I thought about shooting the Dirtski, but with these four guns hitting that Dirtski at range is, I mean, I might get 900 damage if I get an overpen or 800, whatever it is, whatever the damage is, but not enough to really justify shooting when I could have plenty of targets to hit. So I get a nice, you know, big chunk there. Get a bounce in a Citadel. 801 damage is an overpen. Because it's a tenth of, uh, a, of a full damage Citadel hit. So this this ship is a... I'm kind of slowing up because I'm waiting for my team to spread out a little bit so we can create these crossfires. Uh, Corbet looks like he wants to follow me. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe speed up a bit and move in. So I get first blood, another Citadel with two overpens. And uh, that cruiser was way too aggressive. Um, that's kind of an issue you see a lot of cruisers in the low, these low tiers do. They play a lot more aggressive than they really should, especially if there's five battleships. Take your time. Be patient. Now I'm turning anticipation of being dropped here. I see he's not going to drop me, so I'm going to go ahead and resume my course up north. Turn into torpedo bombers, especially in these low tiers where they can't, um, where they have to auto drop you. It'll definitely negate the damage, and these ships do turn very well. I see a Phoenix, another really good target for me, so I'm going to go ahead and fire at him. And I still want to go up into a central position. Now if we look in the north... Um, and we'll, we'll let this another Citadel hit. I got some pretty good R, uh, RNG with my dispersion this game overall, which is definitely helpful, but you want to put yourself in a position to negate RNG as much as possible. And that's exactly what I'm going to be trying to do. 
Um, as you can see, b both teams kind of race to the border. I don't like our team's odds of winning the North, so going to the central position is going to put me in a place where I can assist North, the North side, um, if needed, and keep us from getting into a massive crossfire. I do think it's weird how this map's set up, especially for the fact that it's in a low tier, because it kind of... Newer players... And I was guilty of this too. You know, if I spawned in the north, I ran south too. Uh, because, you know, the mentality, bring as many guns to a location. But what that ends up doing is it puts your team in a crossfire. If your team's in north on here, you kind of have to depend on the team in the south to defend the cap while you delay them from doing anything. Your job isn't the cap. Like that Dursky's trying to do an early cap. Their V170 is going to engage him. And the V170 is... I mean, just spotting him is going to be enough for the Dan A and those two battleships to shoot him. And he's already spotted. You can see that it's getting shipped. So right now I'm looking for a shot. I don't like any of these shots. Uh, Kawachi is really hard to damage when he's bow in on the basis that he has like he doesn't have the superstructure that my ship has. But I see him making a mistake. So I'm going to go ahead and take a shot, see if I can ship him. And we get a good decent chunk. You know, that was a fifth of his health, so. All stations are requesting fire on the designated target. Dursky's looking like a decent target. I'm debating if that Kawachi turns in, I'll probably shoot the Dursky, but I don't expect a lot of damage. You really want to maximize your shells, even if you have to wait a bit uh, to get a good shot. You know, you don't obviously j only want to shoot at broadsides. If nothing's giving you a target, take the shot. But, again, moving into a central position. Now, I'm, I think this Kawachi is going to make a mistake. I fired this because it look, looks like he's really committed to only angling against me. And you can see why I was hesitant to take the shot earlier. You know, two bounces. I think I was trying to go for taking out that front gun too, but nothing happened. It didn't work out that way. He's pretty much broadside to two battleships right now. And that's going to put him... He's going to take some hurt in here. And now he's going to turn out and make the mistake. He is overextended severely. Uh, meanwhile, his entire team has kind of disengaged from even remotely helping him. Sorry for the choppiness of this replay. I've been having issues with my replays, so... I still felt like this game was good to show, as a lot of people make mistakes with the uh, American battleships, and I wanted to show, you know, ways to negate it by playing your role. That I talked about in the Turin video. And the biggest thing when you're, uh, when you play, you know, when you're trying to fulfill your role in general, you know, as a DD crew, whatever, you have to understand your ship's weakness. And the biggest weakness on these Americans is the fact that uh, they don't have super armor and they're fairly slow. So you need to play to that. You need to stay angled. You need to take positions where you can be relevant the entire game. Because your job is heavy fire support and tanking. Now, I don't think I do much tanking in this game, but I do make sure I stay relevant. So I'm waiting to see if he dodges these torps. His engine's out. doesn't look like he has last stand, and those take him out. Now, my team is on a full retreat in the north, and I'm thinking, well, if I can move up and give them supporting fire, you know, we'll be in a better place. Our Dan A, our ballsy Dan A, the team killer Dan A, has gone in and managed to kill one of their battleships in the north. But he's uh, he has no support. He's against three ships, and he's in a crossfire. This It's not going to end well for him. Um, but the Dan A is a pretty tough ship to play. <clears throat> it has great torpedo arcs, fantastic torpedo arcs. But the problem is, is that its guns are really only effective against DDs or cruisers in close range. And a lot of people end up getting frustrated and do those YOLO charges. So I'm going to go for more chip damage, but I'm looking at the South Carolina in the north, and he's who I want to hit. I'm going to pause this video a little less just because of this game is a pretty slow developing one. I want to keep the time down. Um, but I am now I'm preparing to hit the South Carolina. And notice I'm trying to take this turn a little wider. That way I have room to turn in or turn out, depending on however I need to, if I need to deal with this, if I don't get a good first hit on this Carolina. This battle can go a little longer than I want. So I really want to get this first hit as big. I, I double more than double his health. 
So I really want to make sure I land this shot. <clears throat> now, I don't know where the V-170 is, and I don't know where the Dan is. I do have an idea of where they are. Chances are they're moving south to support their team. So I see him. I take a little bit extra time to make sure that I got his speed right. And I'm rewarded with a very big hit. He chips me pretty well, but that's the sort of trade that I'll kind of take any day. And I'm getting ready for the second shot, but you'll see from the left side of the screen, Kaiser's taking the shot. And uh, he only needed a few hits to finish him. So now I'm looking and a lot of players would go, okay, I'll rush the base. Well, I'll be rushing a V-170 and a Dan A. That's not a fight that I realistically think I can win. Um, given my ship's characteristics, I'd really have to get a good hit on that V-170. It would take me two, probably two volleys to kill him. So I would need to get a good hit. Uh, he tells, uh, the Kaiser tells me, hey, I think the DD's up here. And that's not where I think the DD is. Um, I am going to rotate my guns, but I think the DD is rushing that gap. As that's probably what I would do. Uh, snake in, get some good good hits with torps and kills. Uh, you know everyone's moving toward there, and I'd rather intercept uh, in a torpedo boat like the V-170 than chase like you would if he was in the position the Kaiser thought he was. So, but we know where he is. He's right in front of me in that smoke. And uh, he's going to make a mistake. Very soon. He's going to leave the smoke for some reason. And so I already have HE loaded. And in these tiers, the AP pens on DDs, it exists. But it's a far less likely on these really thin destroyers like the V-170, the Japanese, etc. Um, so I just, I always just switch to HE. It, like if I was in a Montana, I would be sticking to AP because your raw damage is enough to chip a DD really hard. Uh, there's no necessarily a need to switch to HE in the upper tiers because that AP pen exists. But in these lower ones, I find it to be better. Now I know that destroyer has torped, but I see this Dan A and so I go, okay, I, I can afford to take one. I cut my speed. I want to make sure I get this shot. I'm not going to have a lot of time to get it. I take it on the belt. So no flooding. Although there was a chance of that flooding, but I had a repair. So I level up my shot. I know right now is the only time I can get that shot off. Any longer, and then most of my shells would hit the island, and I wouldn't have been able to kill him. One citadel was enough. And now I want to move in and support my team in the south, because for some reason the why they have destroyed the people that were uh, charging in after them. But they have two DDs on them, and they're about to have essentially three battleships. Um, what I don't like about my team is uh, on this is that they all grouped up with me. And it's I'm kind of like, you're not creating crossfires. That's going to make this group a little harder to deal with. This is by no means a one game, but this Kaiser, I think, is... Uh, you know, he's about to get owned by the Shenyang. Or at least I think. So I'm trying to get a chip on him, but I only get an overpen. And at this point, he's going to... I think he's flooding out, actually. So we got a Wyoming and a Phoenix left, in addition to a carrier. And the Phoenix is the easiest thing to hit. I'm clicking the airplanes. The AA isn't very good at this tier, but... You know, when you have three ships next to each other, every little bit extra helps. So I get the kill on the Phoenix. Six hits out of uh, out of out of uh, eight. That's actually really good. I was pretty fortunate on it. Well, unfortunate that I didn't get a Citadel, but fortunate that I, you know I got five overpens and one pen. So now I'm just gonna deal with this Wyoming. He vast. He has a lot more health than me, but the difference is I have destroyers supporting me. And it looks like he just wants to straight line. So I line up, take my shot. And it looks like I got a good center line hit for 7.8k, which is pretty good. I think is a turret absorbed one of those pens. But chunks like that are good, and our health differential is kind of equalizing at this point. Shen Yang is going for the carrier. Uh, which is actually not a bad choice. 
V-170 drops Torps in Wyoming. I take another shot, and he really doesn't show any inclination of turning at all. So I do think this might be the last good chunk of damage I can get on him. Just in case he turns, I'm still going to be here to support that V-170, but he's playing a risky game being that low in health and firing. Uh, it really only takes one or two hits from that Wyoming to sink him. One hit if he's lucky and gets a full pen. But it does look like he's going to take all these all these torps. I'm going to take a shot just in case he doesn't, but he's going to die before those shots land. So now it's going to take a little bit of time uh, to get to the carrier. And I'll be taking a shot at him. But you can see I got Confederate means that you played your position well. You were supporting fire on a variety of ships. High caliber mean, you know, means that you've done a lot of damage. But Confederate really means that you were trying to support your team and get good hits on everything that you see at everything that you could possibly shoot at so confederate in these specifically in these lower well actually any tier i think confederate is a more important metal to show that you played your position now uh, on the way there we'll do the quick promo like share subscribe uh feel free to comment your thoughts in the down in the comment section um, if you'd like to support my channel financially so that I can make more content and increase the quality, uh, feel free to donate. I have a PayPal and a Patreon. Uh, PayPal, you can do whatever amount you want. $1, $2, whatever, or, or higher, whatever you want to do. Uh, Patreon, it's like $5 and $25 every month. So you have options. And uh, yeah, now that I'm done selfless, uh, shamelessly self-promoting, I'm going to move in on this carrier. And I don't really want to turn until I get him in almost range and it's kind of going to be a race to uh see if my shells can beat his torp speed and spoiler alert the uh, shells are going to beat his torp speed i'm going to get him just in range don't really care about the fire i just want to get a, at least a chunk here i don't think he's moving so the second my uh reticle taps his bottom i'm going to unleash my full broadside and see how much damage I can do. If he started moving, I probably would have missed this. I thought he'd move since he probably knows torps are coming, but I do end up finishing him off. And that'll be it. Hope you guys enjoyed it.